Well, listen, um, before, we, uh, before we begin praying for people, um, I want to draw our attention to a scripture in James chapter 5. It's, it's, a, it's a scripture in the New Testament that talks about healing. And, and in, in James 5 verse 14, the Bible says, is, is anyone among you sick? It begins with a question. Is anyone among you sick? Then let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him or her up. If anyone among you is sick, let him call for the elder of the, of the church and let him pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. This is what's going to happen this morning as we pray for people. In just a few moments, we are going to be praying for people that need healing, but really for people that need prayer for any reason at all. And, and the reason we're doing that is because healing of sickness and disease is, is a part of the story of the gospel. It's not the only part of the story of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, but it is a part. That what God has done through Jesus is that he has granted us the opportunity to have our sins forgiven, which is the greatest miracle anyone can ever experience. To be set free from anything and everything that torments you and binds you in life. And to be healed in your body. And so one of the things that we're going to go after this morning is healing of sickness and disease. The Bible uses the language, it says, to call for the elders of the church. I've got good news for you. We've already done most of the work already. We've already called for the prayer team and for the elders and for the staff. So if you're here today and you're sick, we've already called them. They're here. And we're ready to pray not only for you but with you. In some cases, we will use oil. Why? Because oil in the Bible simply represents the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit is here to do a miracle in your life. And we pray this morning with this conviction. And that word conviction is just a fancy word to say that, that here's what we're convinced of. When we pray for you this morning, we are convinced that every time we pray, something happens. It's impossible for us to pray and nothing happen. Why are we convinced? Is it because we are so convinced in our ability to pray? Is it because we have so much faith in our prayers or faith in our faith? No, we are convinced because of the one to the one we're praying to. We are convinced because we serve a God that's alive and well and wants to heal you more than you even want to be healed. And so our faith is in him. Our faith is in him. In fact, in fact, he's the healer. I'm not the healer. The people that will be laying hands on you and praying for you, not in a weird way, by the way, but in an authoritative way, we're going to pray for people in the name of Jesus, and we're going to see people be healed. Jesus is the healer. I'm not the healer. The people that will be praying for you, they're not the healer. Jesus is the healer. And so what are we? We're simply conduits. We're, we're, sim we're simply a conduit on earth that's saying, God, we want you to heal this person. And God is going to do a miracle as he works through everyday people to heal everyday people. Amen? That's how Jesus works. Isn't he good? And so here's, here's what you can expect today. You can expect a miracle. What's a miracle? A miracle is, is, is something that happens instantaneously. It's something that, it's a, it's, it's a wow. It's like you can't explain it. You can, uh, there's no logical explanation. There, there's, there's nothing in, in the medical field that can explain what has just happened. A miracle could be, um, you know, you're, you're missing a bone or something is, is, is not there and it grows in. That, that's a miracle. 
Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that happens right now. It's, it's a, a miracle is instantaneous. It's when God comes in the room and says, you know what, I'm just going to do it right now. And so you can expect in some cases, in many cases, a miracle. A miracle is, is uh, you know, the story we shared a number of months ago of, of a gentleman in our church that had cancer. Um, in, he had cancer in, in, his, in his rectum is where he had it, and, and he had tumors. And, and, and he showed me the pictures, and, and I'm telling you, those pictures, like, it's like if you're going to show me pictures, it better be a good story. It was because those tumors were gone, completely disappeared. It was a miracle. I didn't call it a miracle. The man who was healed didn't call it a miracle. It was his doctor, his physician that verified we can't explain it. There's no medical explanation. This, my friend, is a miracle. Instant. Gone. Boom. It's a miracle. So that will happen today. The other thing that will happen today for people that will be receiving prayer for healing is that healing will take place. Now, what's the difference between healing and a miracle? Well, healing healing is progressive meaning you may you'll receive prayer today and you may feel 50% better 60 70 80% better and you'll find that that over time over the next 24 and 48 hours you'll wake up Monday morning or Tuesday morning and you'll realize oh my goodness the pain is gone i'm no longer limping I don't feel like I have the issue anymore. I feel great. I, I, I think God has healed me. And, and he is. And he will. And he's doing it. At no point, either today or in the near future, will we ask anyone to get off of medications of any kind. That is not our place. All we're doing is praying for people. Your physician, your doctor is the only one that can release you in terms of taking medication. If you leave here today or if you wake up tomorrow or sometime this week and you feel as though, man, I'm healed. I don't no longer need this medicine. Well, go to your doctor. Tell them what happened. And and don't give credit to the church or whoever prayed for you. But tell them, I think Jesus has healed me. And let them know, have them run some tests, and then let them clear you of taking any medications. I'm telling you, that will be a, a more, even more remarkable story uh, than, than not doing that. And so, and so we encourage you to do that. So, so at no point is anyone that will be praying for you going to tell you, hey, you know, stop taking your medic. No, they're not going to do that. We're, we're going to pray for people in an authoritative way. We're going to take command over sickness and disease. And in the name of Jesus, we're going to see people become healed and whole and set free because God loves you. Amen. God loves people. And so we're, that, that's going to happen. I, you know, before we, we pray for people, and we're going to do that here very in just a couple of minutes. This morning as I was getting ready for church today, I was reminded of, uh, I have a pastor, a pastor friend who's from Kenya originally. Um, but pastors uh, here in America. And he told me a story, um, and he said to me that he was was taking uh, trips to Kenya and doing services in Kenya, and he had invited an American pastor and his teenage son to come and be a part of those services in Kenya. And so this American pastor and his teenage son, they go to Kenya for the first time, and they begin to experience these services. These services were held outdoors. It was a service like this where people had gathered uh, to worship God through music and to hear the preaching of the word and then to receive prayer. And God began to do incredible miracles in these services. Bodies were healed. People were set free from demonic oppression and and possession. And it was an incredible thing that God was doing. People were giving their lives to Jesus, following Jesus. As they were leaving, the teenage son of this American pastor looked at his dad and says, Dad, I don't want to go back to America. I don't want to go home. I want to stay here. His dad asked him, says, well, why? Why do you want to stay And his son said this, he said, because this book has come alive here. And I want you to know that this book comes alive here at Victory Church. 
that the reason that we're taking time on a Sunday morning to pray for people to be healed is because we love you. Because God loves you. And God wants to do a miracle in your life. And we believe this word. And we want people leaving here today saying, I love God's house because this book comes alive in God's house. This book comes alive in my life. And we want this book to come alive in our region and in our nation for God to do amazing things among us. Amen. And so I'm so excited. I'm so, I'm so excited about, uh, about this moment to be able to just to minister to people today. And so here's, here's what it's going to look like in just a moment. I'm going to have us stand to our feet. And when I do that, our prayer team, they're going to come and they're going to get ready. Uh, We're actually going to have two areas of prayer, two areas. In the front here, our prayer team is going to come and they're going to pray for people up front. And so if if you are in the first front half of the room, this will be your area up here to receive prayer. To those of you in the back half of the room, in the back half of the room, you are separated by that aisle right there in the middle where that camera is. That's kind of the center aisle. We're going to have, we're going to have pastors and we're going to have elders standing in that middle section of the room. And so those of you in the back half of the room that are going to be receiving prayer, you're, you don't have to come all the way down here. You just have to come into that middle section, that middle aisle, and there'll be an elder, there'll be a staff pastor there, and they're going to pray with you. They're going to pray for you, all right? And so, um, and so you're going to do one of three things. One, you're you're going to be doing one of three things. One, you're part of the prayer team, and so you're going to be praying. Two, you will be a recipient of prayer. So you'll be receiving prayer. Or three, you'll be worshiping. So if you're not on the prayer team and aren't praying for anyone and you're not receiving prayer, our worship team is going to be back up here. They're going to be praying softly so that we could pray for people. But they'll be, they'll be leading us in worship So that those of us that aren't praying or receiving prayer, we're going to be worshiping Jesus and thanking God for all that he's doing in the room, all that he's done and all that he's going to do in our region. Amen. And so we're going to we're going to we're going to be expressing our love to Jesus. So you're going to be doing one of three things, either praying for someone. And by the way, our prayer team, they wear lanyards. They wear lanyards. And so if you're if you have someone praying over you that doesn't have a lanyard, they're not a part of our prayer team. Okay? And so, and the reason we do that is because every now and then we'll get people to sneak in here and they want to do some weird stuff. And um, and so we rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, and so and so we because of for your safety, we we've got people that are trained, they'll have a lanyard, it'll say prayer team. Um, and so And so uh, you'll either be praying for people, receiving prayer, or you're going to worship the Lord together. All right? And so let's go ahead and stand up to our feet. And as we do, prayer team, can you come down front? And staff and elders, can you go ahead and get ready in that center section? As our prayer team is getting ready, I'm so excited for what God is going to do. Listen, if you're here and you need prayer for any reason any reason at all in just a few seconds these altars are going to be open that middle section is going to be open for you to receive prayer maybe you're here this morning and you're saying pastor i don't really need a healing in my body i'm i'm not dealing with a physical sickness but maybe maybe your heart needs healing maybe it's your mind that needs healing maybe it's a relationship that needs healing in your life whatever you need prayer for we want to pray for you You don't need to be a member of Victory to receive prayer. You don't need credentials to receive. This is for everybody. This is for anybody that needs prayer. And so in just a moment, we're going to release you to receive prayer here this morning. We're going to release you to receive prayer. Whatever you need prayer for, maybe you're here and maybe you don't need prayer, but there's someone in your life, in your world, a friend. We had that this morning. A number of people came up and said, My husband is not here, or my daughter is not here, or my friend is not here, but they need healing. 
and you can stand in the gap for that person. That's completely legitimate. And we'll pray for them together with you. We'll pray for their healing. We'll pray for God to do a miracle in their life. All right? So right now, wherever you are, if you need prayer, just begin to come. Begin to come either to, towards the front or begin to come towards the middle, those of you in the back. And then the rest of us, we're just going to worship the Lord together. Come on, let's worship God. Is anyone worried? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal? Open the scroll, the Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's truth, the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is anyone, is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's truth, the Lamb and died to ransom the slave. He is worthy, he is worthy of all who 